Hello folks, Professor Fiore here. What are we going to look at today? Why, what we're going to look at is part of a possible op-amp schematic. We're going to look at the first stage, the differential amplifier, of a potential, let's look at it that way, a potential op-amp that you might use, right? So I'm not saying this is what you would see in every op-amp, I'm saying it's a possibility. It shares many attributes that you would see in schematics. The trick here is that when you first look at uh, an internal schematic for an op-amp, you might be overwhelmed. You might see a couple dozen, maybe 30 transistors, and it, you know, really can be overwhelming to the novice. You look at this thing and you wonder, what the heck is going on here? It's like an explosion of transistors. So we want to go in here and sort of pick it apart, simplify it, turn it into sort of sections and sub-circuits that we already know, and then we can sort of logically rebuild this thing, put it together, and you understand how the whole thing works, right? I mean, you could just look at an op-amp as a black box, but, you know, if you approach it that way, it's not much different than magic, okay? So you know, let's dive in here and try to figure out what's going on. Now, before you watch this video, if you haven't already looked at the videos in this playlist, in the op amp playlist, that cover differential amplifiers, current mirrors, and active loads, you should watch those first, because we're going to take all that stuff and combine it together, all right? And again, I'm only going to look at the first stage. All right, we're not going to look at like a, a middle gain stage or an output class B stage. I really just want to focus in on a first stage and see what we have. So let's get right to it. Boom. How does this grab you? You look at this and you say, what the heck is going on here, right? So first of all, 15 volt positive, 15 volt negative power supply, which would be typical. I've got two inputs, right? An inverting and a non-inverting input, which we would expect to see, my generator, and then I just have right here a simple output. Like I said, I'm skipping over any middle gain stages in a, in a typical Class B output stage. There's enough here, right? There's 10 transistors here. And again, if you're not familiar, this just looks like a mess. You know, a bunch of transistors just exploded on the page. What the heck is going on? So we need to sort of Take this apart, right, piece by piece, because ultimately these are all things that we've seen before. We just have to be able to recognize them. It's kind of like learning to read. You know, when you started to read, you know, in English, let's say, you know, you learn what the letters are and the sounds of the letters, and you kind of put them together and make a word. But eventually, you know, if you take a word like simplified, you recognize that is a unit unto itself. You don't think in terms of S, I, M, P, blah, 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 blah. It's just a word, simplified, right? You recognize that cluster of symbols as being a thing, right? Just like, um, you know, you would recognize, let's say, a current mirror, or you would recognize a voltage divider, okay? Same kind of deal. You know, if you're a musician, you would maybe look at a score and you'd see a bunch of notes clustered together. But you wouldn't think in terms of the individual notes necessarily. You would see it and say, oh, that's a uh, B-flat major seventh chord. Okay? They're all stacked together here. I know what that is. It's a thing. And, of course, we go beyond that. Now we can look at clusters of words and recognize that as a thing. You know, like op-amp or inverting input. Okay? Same sort of deal. So what are the little clusters here that we can make sense out of? The first thing I want to focus on is sort of this mess up here, okay? This turns out to be a current source. You know, if we look at this real quick, you might say this kind of looks like a diff amp, you know, PNP transistors, but, you know, that whole symmetry thing that we see going on here, a couple of collectors, and I'll put on a collector, like there would be a tail current source over here, you know? I mean, it's PNP, so it's upside down compared to the NPN version. So you'd expect the current, the tail current source up here. So what is this? Some of you may have already recognized this is a very high quality current mirror. Simple current mirrors are made with, you know, one transistor and one diode. 
higher quality, we have more components. So, you know, let's take a little bit of a look. Bonk. So I've gotten rid of the stuff in the middle, leaving just the elements of interest. So this is, in fact, a four device, two diode, two transistor uh, current mirror. All right. And this creates the tail current source, essentially. Right. So don't forget, you know, when we make uh, integrated circuits, we make diodes by simply making transistors and we short the collector base. Remember, we do that because it's very easy to make transistors. You know, we don't make individual transistors in integrated circuits. It's like we make all the emitters and all the bases at the same time. So the easiest way to make a transistor um, or excuse me, a diode is to just make a transistor and then short the collector base junction. So what we have is a transistor, a transistor, a diode, and a diode, all right? And this is this four component, very high quality current mirror. And to calculate the current mirror, right, you would take the voltage across the current mirror, subtract out any diode drops, and in this case, you would have two of them, right? This transistor will actually be locked in at 0.7 because of the configuration that we have here. Then this is explained again in some detail in the current mirror uh, current mirror video. So we've got about you know 1.4 1.5 volts, whatever it works out to. Uh, for that, we've got a total of 30 volts, and then there's a 14k. So if you took the 30, you subtract uh, you know about 1.4, you're going to have about you know 28.6 or so volts dropping across the 14k. So you're going to get about 2 milliamps. I'm not going to, you know, chase the digits on this, but you're going to get about 2 milliamps. And of course, that's mirrored over here. So this is basically a 2 milliamp current source. So you can take this whole thing and mentally just replace it with a current source that's equal to 2 milliamps. Done, right? So you just take that original thing, right? All this and you say, oh, well, that's just a current source that's equal to 2 milliamps. All right, now what do we do? So we take that next step, do the replacement, and here we are. Okay, so there's my tail current source. So again, going back to the original circuit, all, right, all of this stuff just turns into a current source. Bonk. Now this is looking, you know, a little bit more sensible, a little bit more obvious. What's the next thing we might do? Well, you might recognize that these are Darlingtons. Right? Remember, the whole idea of a Darlington is to increase the beta. It's like a super beta transistor. How do you think of a Darlington? Well, you think of it usually as just a normal transistor, right? a normal BJT, except that it has this huge beta. Right? You have a, a doubling of the uh, VBE drop. Right? You have two VBEs. Right? So instead of 0.7, you think in terms of 1.4. And of course, the uh, associated R prime E values go up. All right? So mentally you could replace this with a pair of individual transistors a couple of pnp transistors and now you get this all right so if i just showed you this up front you'd say oh yeah okay that's just a pnp you know upside down pnp differential amplifier no biggie here's the current source right that's a two milliamp current source so this is going to split one milliamp one milliamp all right now in a single transistor that would indicate uh, our prime ease of, of 26 ohms, right? In the case of a Darlington, it's going to be, you know, 50 something. All right. And based on that, you could calculate a gain, assuming you had a nice resistor out here. But you have something funky down here, right? You don't have just resistors. What is this? Well, this is a simple current mirror. This is, in fact, what we call an active load, right? So there's a whole nother video just talking about active loads. And the whole point on the active load, besides the practical edge that you're going to use transistors for your load rather than resistors, because it's very easy in the integrated circuit world to create the transistors, that works out well. Um, because this actually acts as a constant current sink, then all of the AC current is sort of forced out to the load. This is going to have a higher internal impedance than just having a resistor out here. So you get to maximize the gain. That's the whole point of an active load. You use transistors, which, like I said, is more convenient in the integrated circuit level, and you get more gain, which is what you're after, ultimately, right? So if you just think of this, okay, that's my load, then you've got input, input, right? Not inverting and inverting inputs. You've got the output, 
you got your power supplies, you got your tail current source. Well, this is something you've seen before. All right? I mean, the very first circuit you looked at, the very first circuit we looked at in the part one of the, uh, of the diff amp sequence was essentially this, except we had resistors over here, right? And it was an NPN versus a PNP, but hey, there it is. So you actually have a pretty good idea, right? When you go back to the original circuit, you know, mess, right? It's just like overwhelming. All of these transistors, there's 10 transistors in here. What the heck? Where do I start? Where do I begin? You know, you pick it apart. Maybe when you look at it, the first thing you notice is these are Darlington's. Okay, fine. Mentally replace that. You might then notice, oh, that's a that's an active load. Great. Okay, what's this? You might have to think about that for a sec because it's because it's kind of a upscale current mirror, right? But still, this thing, right, having having this transistor, and maybe it is just the simple two transistor version, the diode transistor version versus the four element. But this idea of having this with a resistor setting up the current, this is really, really common in op amps. And very often you would see something like this in the middle of the circuit. In other words, first stage, then you would have a voltage gain stage, and then you would have you know, the class B uh, push-pull output stage over here. And in the middle somewhere, you would have something like this, right? So you know, this might be drawn out this way. And then this resistor, on the bottom of this resistor, you would see another transistor diode combo, which would create another current source, which might be used to maybe bias that middle gain stage. It might be used to bias the uh, class B output, you know, whatever. And one of the nice things about that is as you scale the power supplies, right, as the power supplies, maybe you're not going to run on 15, maybe you're going to run on plus and minus 12, plus and minus 9, that current, that bias current also scales. And that just sort of becomes the, the core element that programs the driving current for the circuit. All right, so that's pretty common. So what do we end up with in this little circuit? All right, well, you know, let's just do a, uh, a little transient analysis and see what we come up with. You know, we should get a decent amount of gain out of it, right? Boom. All righty. So our uh, generator is this green, which is really tiny. That's only a one millivolt signal. And then the load is the maroon, nice big signal. And it might be hard to see, but these are in phase. You know, this is only like a couple of pixels variation. Um, let's see if we can pick up something on here. Yeah, we are getting the, you know, virtually one millivolt, 997 microvolts. You can see that's positive, and then you can see that's negative. Okay. And then if I grab the other probe, pull him over there, and then look at the output, right? So you can see we're pulling a little over 300 millivolts on here. All right. So that's pretty good. We got a gain of 300 out of this thing. Um, and if we calculate out, you know, what are you going to get for a load impedance out here? Well, you know, depends on the quality of the current source, the transistors that you have. I don't know, 10K, 20K, 50K, 100K, you know, it all depends. But it's going to be better than just, you know, hanging a couple of K ohm resistor out here. All right. Okay, so we start with something that, like I said, might appear at first glance to be sort of overwhelming. Um, but in fact, it's all stuff we've seen, all right? And like I said, I just hung a little RC network out here for a load, but you would go into, you know, a normal gain stage, a class B output, and there might be things attached to that. So in that class B, you know, there might be uh, a current limiter, all right? So, you know, to prevent short circuit um, output current limit, right? You'd have a, you'd have a, a you don't, you don't want the output to blow up if you accidentally short, short out the output, right? So we could have a current limiter in there. We could have a VBE multiplier as part of the bias for the, for the uh, class B, okay? And you just have to kind of take those pieces out, recognize what they are, and then sort of look at the bigger picture, the simplified version. And very often a manufacturer will give you a simplified equivalent circuit. And it may only have, you know, four or five transistors in it, right? You know, typically they would probably be maybe show a five transistor circuit 
with uh, you know two transistors for the uh, diff amp, maybe one transistor for a gain stage drive transistor, and then two strand two transistors for the uh, class B output. Right, but in reality. You know, the, the true design of the thing, like I said, might have two dozen transistors in it, 30 transistors in it, because you really have something closer to this. All right. So just a little patience. You just have to learn it just like you learned a language, just like you learn the letters and then built up to words and then built up the phrases and sentences. It's the same thing here. We have to recognize the pieces and, you know, put that together into a larger sort of uh, picture. Right? Think of like a, a jigsaw puzzle. You know, maybe it's a puzzle of a, a sunset and you recognize, oh, this is the sunset and this is the trees over here and this is the beach. And, you know, you can kind of see how the things work together. Right. And ultimately, that all comes with practice. The more you see, the more you recognize and the easier it all becomes. All right. Great. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Questions down in the comment section. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.